Hello, sister, and welcome to the Art of Spiritual Living online retreat. My name is Elizabeth Foley. I am an artist and a creative catalyst. I help women get in touch with their inner creative spirit and get over their creative blocks. So we are exploring all different ways to slow down, tune inward, get in touch with our intuition and awaken our inspiration. And today we are going to be diving into some creative practice with Bodhi Simpson, who is an art therapist. And I'm excited to get started, but as usual, let's take a moment to just make sure that we're really present so we can really soak up the juice of this session. Um, so take a moment to make sure your physical space is ready. You know, today you're gonna need some coloring goodies. You know, pastels are recommended if you have them. I don't, so I'm using my trusty Tombow watercolor markers. But really whatever you have is gonna work. You're gonna to wanna to have your journal today and um, you know, have something yummy in your glass. Let's see, today I have some raspberry kombucha, which is delicious. Yum. So go ahead and you know, turn off your phone, shut down your other apps, hang that do not disturb sign on the door so you can just really be present. Let's take a moment to get present, you know, mentally. Um, I know we're all coming from so many different things, and it's good when we want to um, dive into a creative practice to just take a moment to really get centered. So if you've joined us for other sessions, you know that I like to lead an OM chant. Um, for those of you who maybe haven't been with us before, I want to go ahead and give you the basics for how to do that. So the OM sound is actually a three-part sound, and the first part is going to be the Oh, sound, and you're going to want to feel that vibration here in your neck. So when we chant OM, it's really not about how it sounds. It's about that vibration, um, listening to it and tuning inward, and then you can actually feel it in your body. So that first sound, you're going to want to feel vibrating here in your neck. The second part of the sound is the ooh sound, and you're going to feel that vibration here in your neck. And then the last part is the mmm sound, and you're going to feel that vibration here in your chest. So when you put it all together, it sounds like this. Oh, um, <clears throat> excuse me. And um, if you're not feeling those vibrations, you can change your tone a little bit to feel the vibration. And again, it's not really important how you sound. What's important is that you're using this moment to really tune inward. So I'm going to invite you now to close your eyes, and we're going to just start tuning into our breath. And when we chant OM, what we'll do is we'll inhale together, and as we exhale, we'll exhale OM, and then we'll do that three times. So let's just close our eyes and take a few deep breaths. <clears throat> really come into our bodies right here in this moment. And now let's inhale together and we'll exhale OM. Oh. Oh. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes. So we are here today with Bodhi Simpson. She is a licensed clinical professional counselor and a registered art therapist with a private practice, Conscious Art Therapy in Waterville, Maine. She's the co-founder of Vast Horizon Center for Personal Growth in Yarmouth, Maine, and co-founder of the Self-Compassion Symposium held annually in Freeport, Maine. Bodhi provides individual, individual sessions, workshops, speaking engagements, healing retreats, and clinical trainings for professionals incorporating creative expression and work with imagination, imagination, intuition, and metaphor. She has presented locally, nationally, and internationally. She's currently the president of the Maine Mental Health Counselors Association and is pursuing her PhD in wisdom studies from Wisdom University. So welcome, Bodhi. So happy to have you here. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for having me. So um, first, I want to kind of ask you, tell us a little bit more about what art therapy is. 
Yeah, so um, I like to tell people basically my job is helping people express themselves in creative ways. And so I have a lot of different training in um, the combination of art and human development and psychology. And I like to work with people one on one to identify the way that feels most comfortable for them to express their inner world. Mm. And I mean, I have been asking everybody else this since this is the art of spiritual living online retreat. What does uh, spiritual living mean to you? So for me, spiritual living, I believe, is taking the time to really go inward and connect with my inner world, which is so easy to forget about. And then um, the way that I practice that is through creativity. So I like to go into my inner world and then create something tangible that helps me to remember my experience and also just um, to get out of my head and more into my heart and to notice when I'm not in my heart and then just take the time to come back into my heart. Mm-hmm. So, um, so again, just having that unity connection. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I relate to that a lot. I'm an artist too. So for me, you know, tuning in and getting creative is, uh, it's a spiritual practice for me. Um, but I'm curious to hear what you have to say for people who haven't approached art that way or, you know, don't think of themselves as creative. Yes. So I have many people um, that come to work with me because they feel like, well, I look nice in the psychology today ad maybe, but they're afraid of being creative. And so what I let them know is, you know, remembering what it's like when we're a young child and we're not afraid of being creative. We're going to the mud and we'll create something with the sticks and the mud and we're not worried about judgment and really helping people to understand that um, using art in this way is really more about the process of creating and letting whatever needs to emerge come to the surface so that we can explore it. Uh, So I work a lot just to help people feel safe exploring their own creativity and let go of what we're going to do with it after. Mm-hmm. So really let it be a process. Yeah, it can be really easy to get caught up in the end result of creativity. And it's so important to remember, especially when we're approaching creativity from the idea of it being a spiritual practice to let ourselves just really get caught up in the moment of it. And, you know, if something beautiful comes out in the end, great. And if not, and that's okay too. Um, so I know that today we are going to be working with creating our own personal symbols. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So again, a lot of the people that I work with come in and what they say is, you know, I'm, I'm stuck in my head. I don't know what direction to go in my life. I, I try thinking my way through it. I think about every possible outcome. And what I realize is that many times they're not embodied. And so um, today what we're going to do is just work to understand how to communicate with our subconscious mind and the way that our subconscious mind communicates to us is through symbols, colors, and metaphor, and it's actually accessible at any time, but often we just don't take the time to slow down and go within, and so today we are going to be practicing that. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to just dive right in. I already started drawing stuff. (laughs) Okay, so um, so what I'd like to do first, often again, it, it takes a little bit of time for people to kind of settle into the experience, so what I'd like everybody to do in your journals is just write down the top three areas of challenge, struggle, or areas of growth for you at this time in your life. Mm. Now, do you want, should we be doing real specific here or more broad? Um, They can be just kind of broad areas of your life. So maybe home, maybe work, maybe a certain relationship. And once you've identified your three top areas, what I'd like you to do is circle the one that really feels like it has the most energy for you right now. Okay. Okay, and now what I'd like you to do is just take a moment and write a sentence about that word or that theme. Okay, and now what I'd like you to do is just read your sentence and again, narrow the sentence down to one word. Okay. 
Okay. So I like to have people often just do a little bit of writing before they do these practices, because again, often we can kind of have all these different themes in our life. And when we are working with the subconscious mind, it is important to get clear with our intention, so to really get clear in what energy we're working on. And so um, sometimes people will say, oh no, but my word is negative or it's positive. And there's no right or wrong with any of this. So whatever word emerges is the place of, of growth, challenge, or struggle. And um, it doesn't always have to be a challenge or a struggle. It can simply be growth. It can be a positive thing as well. So whatever word you have is just the right word. And the other thing that I like to have us anchor into is self-compassion. So a lot of times when people come in, I find that what starts to emerge is that there's a block around healing and around um, people feeling worthy of healing, and they don't often realize that they're blocking themselves. So I like to do a little visualization just um, to get into that place of having an open heart, being very open to the process, so open to receiving. And um, the other thing is also we're going to be doing some work with our mind's eye, and so I just like to explain that a little bit before we do the process because, again, I don't want you to go into your thinking mind when we do this experience. And so when we're working with our mind's eye, you're going to be closing your eyes. I'm going to take you on a visualization to tune into your heart and open that up. And we're going to work on connecting our heart to our mind. So again, if you're noticing thoughts going in your mind, I just want you to take deep breaths in and you're just going to breathe out your thoughts going down to the center of the earth. And I will talk you through this as well. We're going to have you focusing your energy on breathing in and out through your heart area. And then I'm going to have you shift your attention up to your mind's eye. And it's basically the place where if you're daydreaming through the day, when you're having your dreams, so when you close your eye, you're just going to notice your, your attention kind of going up to the center of your forehead. And once we do shift to this part, what I, I like to do is just have people imagine that they're pulling down a projector screen so that you're going to be pulling down a projector screen in your mind's eye. And this is a place where we're going to be able to have our subconscious mind direct our image. And so it's just kind of um, helping people to understand how the subconscious mind works. It works on autopilot all the time. But what we need to do is just start learning how to push the right buttons in our computer so that we can access the images more powerful, or more powerfully. And in the beginning, people will often say, oh no, I don't see anything. I must be doing this wrong. And so this is a muscle that the more you practice it, the more you're gonna be connected to how it works for you. And so for some people, they may, they may say, I didn't see anything at all, but what will happen is when you go to your paper with your art materials, you're gonna, again, be leading with your heart and intuitively let the image or colors come onto the paper. So what we're doing is we're, we're directing consciously, we're turning on our mind's eye and connecting it with our heart. And for some people, they may actually see colors very vividly, or they may actually see an image, but this isn't going to be a, a 30 minute process of connecting. It's literally going to be connecting with our hearts, going up into our minds, turning it on, and an image is going to come within three to five seconds. So sometimes I'll find people kind of sitting there, all right, oh wait, maybe it's coming. Oh wait, wait, I wanna turn it into something else. Um, so again, this is a sense, it's different than using your imagination. It's more of a sense as though it's just kind of coming in and you don't really have a connection necessarily to what it means. So often our inner symbolism is very mysterious to us. You may have a symbol that shows up that, that you don't like very much. So for instance, if you don't like snakes and you get a snake on there, I don't want you to take the time to try to think your way out of it. I just want you to let whatever comes come. Even if it's a symbol that is really basic and, and then your critic starts coming in saying it's not good enough, these are actually meant to be very simple. And the reason I like using pastels is because you can't do too much detail. So again, I really want this to emerge authentically and, and let it kind of take form as you're creating. Okay. So what I'd like everybody to do, if you feel comfortable, is put your feet flat on the floor. And if you feel comfortable to close your eyes, you're gonna take a deep breath in through your nose till it hurts to breathe any deeper. And as you breathe out, you're just going to release any heaviness, any emotions that you are having. Just let them go through your body, down through your feet, down to the center of the earth. And with every out breath, just relaxing your body. What I'd like you to do now is take your right hand and you're going to place it on your heart. And I'd just like you to bring your awareness up into your mind's eye. And I'd like you to imagine yourself as a youthful, innocent child 
full of wonder. When the world was a magical place. And I'd like you to smile sweetly to that thought. And we're going to practice breathing in that love for that young, innocent child in through our heart. So with every breath, just breathing in love and holding this image of this youthful, innocent part of you. And if you notice your heart closing, if there's a trigger here, with the out breath, just imagine there's a flower on your heart and just imagine that you're gently opening up that flower, giving yourself permission to open. Because today we're setting space to be safe to do this work. And what I'd like you to do now is we're gonna shift the image of your youthful self and we're gonna hold an image of yourself at this time. Everything that you're going through, you still deserve love and compassion. And so what I'd like you to do now is you're gonna take a deep breath in through your heart area, holding this vibration of love and compassion. And as you breathe it in through your body, you may actually see this color or you may feel the vibration of a vibrant color of pink. So with every breath, I'd like you to let the vibration of the color pink of self-compassion just filling your entire being. And you're gonna to start to feel an expansion in your chest area. And you're gonna to start to feel self-compassion going out into your arms and your legs. And as I do this work for myself, I begin to feel almost like a giggle or a tickle inside. It feels very good and very light. And with the last out breath, I'd like you to imagine that vibrant color pink coming out of your ears and your eyeballs and your mouth, and beaming out of your fingertips and your toes. Just the feeling of having your heart be fully open. And as we step into this next part of our experience, I encourage you to consciously use your breathing to keep your heart open, noticing if it's closing up. And as you breathe out, just opening it up. And now that our heart is open, what I'd like you to do is bring your awareness up into your mind's eye. So again, the center of your forehead between your eyebrows and shifting your awareness up. What I'm gonna have you do is pull down a, a projector screen. So this imaginary projector screen that our mind's eye is going to be able to project an image onto. And I'd like you to think about the word that you came up with after your writing. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask your subconscious mind to give you a symbol and connection to this word and the symbol is going to appear within three to five seconds. I just want you to listen and watch closely. And when you're ready, what I'd like you to do is wiggle your toes. Maybe put your hands on your legs. Take a deep breath in. And you can open your eyes. And again, we're not panicking. We're staying in our heart area. And you may or may not have viewed the essence of a symbol or some colors. But what I'd like you to do now is take five or ten minutes. And you're going to be guided by the colors that most speak to you, they may excite you, they may remind you of something and just let an image come onto the paper again, letting go of what it should look like. Just let the form emerge and we'll check in in a few minutes.
So can I ask a question, Bernie? Yes. What would you say to somebody out there who says, I didn't see anything? So remember that as we connect with our hearts and bring our awareness up into our mind's eye, what we've done is consciously turned on our mind's eye. And it doesn't always as clearly express itself when we have our eyes closed and we're going within. And so again, what you're going to do is this is a felt process. So you're just going to grab whatever colors speak to you and let them go onto the page and let them take form. And again, it may be a form that does not make any sense to you. It may be scribbles, but that's what feels right. So really you're following your own sense of beauty. And again, it may not be beautiful, but your own sense of um, a felt sense of what feels right. So we're just practicing letting our subconscious speak to us through the colors. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> That's a good question. And as you're creating, if you do notice yourself going up into your thinking mind or having fear about maybe not being good enough, again, remembering with your out breath, you're opening up your heart, staying in that false sense, and also consciously using your breathing to release any fear, negative thoughts just going down through your body, down into the earth. So we're using our breathing and our visualization to keep us present. Mm -hmm.
and just let me know when you have a sense that you're done. Eve. Yeah, well, it's hard to, it's hard to stop. It's like, <laughs> yeah. You keep adding layers. Yeah. Okay, so anytime that you do these visualizations and checking in with your personal symbolism, it's helpful to put a date. Mm -hmm. And what I also like to do is just look at the image again with an open heart. And I'd like to write down a phrase or a title that comes to me. If you don't have one, that's fine. But I'd like you to practice opening your heart and connecting to what title the image has or what word next to it. Okay, so I'm curious for you, Elizabeth, what the experience was like for you to go within and have your heart open and to come into your mind's eye and stay present with an image and then to try to create that image. What was that like? Well, it's interesting, you know, um, I'll share my image. This is what I have. My word was shine and I definitely had a lot of sort of and you kind of mentioned this in the lead-in of like oh it's just a sun um, <laughs> so uh it was i was glad that you had said that earlier about you know accept what comes and all of that because there, there was that moment of um yeah like oh this is all i get is a sun but you know as i look at it there's a lot of like subtle kind of things in it that have significance to me yes so again, that inner critic, so it's noticing this inner critic when it comes in and letting that take a back seat because our, our inner symbolism is often very basic. Mm. And for those of us that are um, consider ourselves very creative and artists, you can take that symbol and you can continue. Your mind's eye will still be open as long as you're bringing your awareness and connecting to your heart. You just keep creating and, and it will continue to speak to you. But you can just have a simple practice where you take time to check in and let a symbol emerge. And actually, what I'd like you to do now is if you feel comfortable sharing with us what your first word was that when you had done your writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, my first word is shine. Oh, so the first word was shine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. That was my first word. Oh, nice. Word. Okay. So sometimes what can happen, and so for everybody out there doing this experience, your first word may be very different from the symbol that you created in the word. And that, there's no right or wrong with any of it. But the work then, so with kind of the intention or with the writing that you had done, is to um, put your image out from you a little bit. So um, I would maybe have you hold your image out next to you here. And looking at your image, again, with an open heart, I'd like you to share with us in what ways this image feels like. What does it remind you of? What wisdom is it giving you as far as maybe what's going on in your life right now? Mm -hmm. um, and again, you don't have to go super into detail, but the work is to really build a relationship with what it reminds you of, what it feels like, what the wisdom is from the image. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. So my original word was shine. When you asked us to talk about a challenge that we were having, um, one of my challenges is, um, you know, being willing to really be authentic all the time and to kind of shine my light, you know? So um, what I wrote after, when you asked us to write after drawing our image, I wrote your layers of radiance shine. So you can see that there's this sun, but then there was all this like swirling color inside that made me think of layers. So um, the message I think to me is like tapping into that, that where there might be one part of myself where I don't feel confident about, there's this other area where I do feel confident, so I can tap into that to shine more. Yes. And so 
the images, again, speak to our subconscious mind in a very deep way. And mm -hmm. so the work now is to take these symbols, and again, they may be a triangle, it may be a rocking chair, it may be something that people, it's mysterious, they have no idea what it represents to them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's to, to consciously bring them into your life and work with them. So you're gonna be um, hopefully putting your journal out and doing some meditation with this image. And you can do it throughout your week, you can do it you know, every morning, every night, you can do writing with it. But again, it's practicing viewing your image with an open heart and really letting the wisdom seep in. Because even if you don't understand what it means, it is communicating to your subconscious mind and making shifts. And it's funny that you made a heart because I actually have one here that um, somebody I was working with um, who was a little bit younger had created as a, a representation of some of the work we had done together. Mm -hmm. And so you can take your creation, you can paint, you can, this one is a, a grounding stone. So you can take a stone, you can create your anchor. Um, this is one I had done a while ago, just an image that kept coming in my mind's eye, which probably is the image of the mind's eye. Um, but I, I have people create these and they put them, put them in your home, put it in your kitchen, put it um, in your meditation space, stick your symbol on your fridge. Your friends will say, oh, that's so adorable. And you can kind of giggle and say, oh yeah, that's something I'm working with. You don't really have to go into depth with it, but you want it to be, the, the reason doing this kind of work with personal symbolism and creativity is so important because it takes this experience from your internal process and it creates something tangible because what often happens when we're in meditation is we have these amazing experiences and then we come back into our lives and we lose touch and get disconnected with the power of the experience. Mm -hmm. So what these are is actual anchors back into this spiritual and felt sense so that you can more consciously learn from your own wisdom, be more clear about what learning you need to have, what, what guidance you need to take for yourself. So for you, the, it may be the word shine, it may be the sun, but it's, it's an anchor may also be the spiral. So you actually have a lot of different symbols mm. kind of tied into one. But, um, but yeah, so the work is just to, to continue to build a relationship and be curious and be open. And what's going to start to happen is you're going to start to see these symbols also played out in your life. So you may be seeing suns a lot more now. Um, the symbol of sun, um, you know, after I created this mind's eye, I was seeing this everywhere. There was eyeballs on everything. So symbols are also going to be here to just give you. Um, they're like little puzzle pieces along the way, and you'll start to notice them more as you connect to your internal symbolism, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I love, well, first of all, I, I see that too a lot of times, so I am going to be interested in seeing where this symbol pops up. And I love that you said that too about mine, because here I am just thinking it's a sun, and you're right, it's a spiral in a sun. And the spiral was definitely part of what emerged as I was creating from following what felt good to create. So that kind of gives me another layer to look at too. So now I'm curious to see where I'm gonna find spirals and suns. And actually, <laughs> here, wait, I have to show you what, I just hung this up today to do another session that was like a movement session. Um, so here, I'll show you what's hanging up. This does not usually hang here, by the way. Oh, I love it. So yeah, so I have suns all around me already. I'm starting to see them. <laughs> Um, and the funny thing is too, I went to take that down and it just didn't happen. So here it is. And this is, I have a million different symbols in my office and this is the one that I chose to share with you today. So I'm reflecting it back to you here. But the other thing is also the color, you know, color is vibration. And so if you see a black sun, you still want to create that because the black sun is going to communicate to you. It's again, the felt sense. Mm. Um, or people may have just seen the color violet in their mind's eye and the work is working with the color violet. What does the color violet feel like? What does it, what does it remind you of? It may, it may um, spark a memory in your mind's eye. So again, it's just, it's really working on the metaphor of what it reminds you of. You may take your, this is my creation, I'll show you. You may take your creation and you may not be framing this or putting it up, but it's, it's opened up a door that now you can explore. Mm -hmm. That had you not created something tangible to remind you, you may not have ever explored. Mm -hmm. so. I love the idea of using these symbols to help us integrate our knowing into our lives because I feel like, well, that's a big part of what I want to help people with in putting this retreat together is that the idea that spirituality isn't something that we're just doing when we go to a retreat or when we sit in an ashram, you know, that those are really valid experiences, but it's also something that we live within our daily lives and that um, I just love the idea of, you know, drawing one of these symbols and hanging it on the fridge because every time I look at it, 
what it's going to remind me of too is that moment where I closed my eyes and took some deep breaths and really took a break from from life and took a moment to honor my spirit. So I just love that as a really simple way to integrate these ideas into our lives. That's great. Exactly. And you create a visual altar that came from you and it speaks to you. And whether or not you consciously know what it means, it's your being knows what it means. Yeah, I love that. Create a visual altar. <laughs> um, so Bodhi, I, I've really enjoyed this and it's been really great. And I want to um, tell everyone else here if they've enjoyed this, how they can dive a little deeper with you. I know you have a free gift for us, a heart opening experience. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so it's, it's a little bit more of what we've done today. Again, it's a lot of people, you know, they read these books on how do I do this? And really the work is just taking time every day to engage in one of these kind of practices. And so I like to have them be very simple and very basic. And so the experience that I have shared with you is, an, again, another visualization and an experience using watercolors to practice holding heart space open and practice staying in the moment. And again, consciously using your breathing to, um, to clear, you know, if that critic starts coming in. So, and again, just taking, once you done, are done creating, just take the time to witness your process and notice what comes up in you. And you can do some journaling or sharing, um, but at least taking the time to really honor what comes from the experience. Awesome. awesome. That sounds really great. Thank you so much for being with us today, Bodhi. It's been such a pleasure. Um, I'm excited to uh, make a symbol and hang it on my fridge. And I'm excited to see what all of you have created. So if you've created something that you want to share, pop over into the Facebook group, share it with us. Um, tell us what your symbol is and, and where you see it popping up in your life. I'd love to hear those stories of that synchronicity. Um, and then be sure, of course, to sign up for Bodhi's free gift. The link is right below. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Blessings.